Hey, uh, this is Bone Brew from Polycount, um, and I wanted to do a quick tutorial uh, to share something that I learned on my last project, uh, which you can see right here. Uh, this is the thing. It, it wasn't done for the movie, it was done for a game tie-in. Uh, but I had access to the reference material for the movie, and uh, so there was some some things I learned when I was trying to find a way to, to create the shapes I needed to. Um, you can notice all these little design elements almost, or, uh, tendons, or like, uh, in some areas they look kind of like stretched skin, or just really, really gnarly interwoven line pattern, um, and, uh, the way I found out to do it, or just the way I came up with to do it, is with the planar line tool. So I'm going to show you guys how you can use it. Um, so the biggest thing is that you don't want to you don't want to do this at a low subdivision level. You want to make sure you're at your detailing phase and you're at basically max poly count. Wow, we really are at max. Never mind, we go down one. Um, so, let's say I'm just gonna really quickly sketch in some forms. Uh, wow, just some big gashes, and you've got maybe this is like muscles uh, or I mean anything really and you wanna you wanna kinda create little lines going through here and uh, if you were to do that with just a, a normal standard brush it just it, no don't even get out of here it's not gonna work because it's the norm the normals are, are too they're just too packed in there um, so what you do, go down here to your planar line brush. And this guy, um, you can either go with the default alpha um, or use use an alpha that has more than one sort of uh, island. Yeah, and there's, there's the first thing to talk about. So you need to use a big draw size bigger than you're gonna think because uh, it's gonna be affected by your draw size it's not gonna affect anything down in that little hole if your draw size is too small um, so so if, if it gets if you have to use a big draw size but you wanna have a small line then just use a small alpha it's pretty simple right so yeah you just move your line over to the other side of the crease and then hold out and go back okay so you can do that to your heart's content and it, it's a pretty easy way to just get a good looking kind of um, you know it, it can it can either look like stretched skin or in this case it looks more like uh, knitted bone, I want to say, but it's definitely a more abstract kind of shape, so it's not, it's not like this is how you create realistic form, <laughs> but uh, there's how you would uh, go about maybe doing something with a, a larger number of individual fibers, and then Alpha 58 is sort of the farthest, and then yeah, you do get this a lot, uh, deal with it, or you can also mask off your hole beforehand, invert, and then boom. Look at that. Super quick. Uh, so yeah, uh, I wanted to also show, I mean obviously you can smooth it and it looks more like skin now. See this looks more uh, bony, but this looks like there's tendons going through the skin here. So that is basically it. Um, 
There's also something else that I found out for if you really want to do compression wrinkles and you don't want to waste a lot of time, you want to just do them super quick, uh, it's really, really good for that because, you know, compression wrinkles tend to form these sharp lines going through a, like a, a, a cylindrical surface like this, like say that's a pant leg or a shirt um, arm. You put these in here, in like a brick kind of pattern, like this. Put in as many as you want. And then you need to do a little bit of massaging. Uh, I like to just do a quick kind of outline of the forms with standard brush and then drop down a couple subdivisions and just sort of smooth it all out. And we go in. Uh, and then Sometimes it's helpful to rebuild the subdivisions, and it almost never looks perfect, but whatever. This is super quick, and it's not going to look perfect, so get over it. Um, and then this is the uh, trim dynamic brush, we just planar sort of forming these these more tight creases instead of the like blobby shapes you get with the standard brush. Um, right now I'm holding out to push out instead of um, push in. <coughs> and it doesn't look that good, but if you if you play with it for a little bit more than I have here, you can get it to look super clean. And then you know, after the fact, everything's said and done. Yeah, I'm just gonna smooth it out so it actually looks like folds it all. So yeah, after you've done that, um, you know, I <laughs> it works. Trust me. <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's something that I learned and I, I use it a lot, and uh, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So.